Federal investigators arrested a Carrollton couple accused of dealing drugs to middle and high school students. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. And I'm Steve Eager. Three died. Six were hospitalized. All the fentanyl overdoses were linked to a drug house just blocks away from R.L. Turner High School. Fox 4's Lori Brown is live in Carrollton right now with more on this story. Lori. Steve, according to the federal criminal complaint, the students who died or were hospitalized were between 13 and 17 years old, and the man and woman that police arrested were working with eight R.L. Turner High School students to deal the drugs. This house on the 1800 block of Highland Drive in Carrollton is just five blocks from R.L. Turner High School and two blocks from DeWitt Perry Middle School. And investigators say it is there that Luis Navarrete, 21 years old, and Magali Mejia Cano, 29 years old, distributed drugs to eight R.L. Turner High School students between 14 and 16 years old, who then sold the drugs to their classmates at the high school, DeWitt Perry Middle School and Dan F. Long Middle School. The complaint puts a spotlight on how devastating stating this fentanyl operation was. One 14-year-old student overdosed on Christmas Eve. She survived and then overdosed again last month, becoming temporarily paralyzed. Five other students also overdosed in the span of a few months, and three more students died. The youngest overdose victim, just 13 years old. Richard Roper, a former U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Texas, not associated with this case, says these arrests should be a wake-up call to parents. The problem is users have no idea how potent it is, and that's what causes the deaths. With fentanyl being labeled the deadliest drug in the U.S., Roper says Navarrete and Mejia Cano will likely face stiff sentences if they are convicted. In federal court, the sentences could be very high just because of the fact that fentanyl is being distributed, but also uh, the fact that they're selling it within a school zone area uh, could be an, an additional aggravating factor. And to top that off, if someone dies as a result of a, a drug distribution in federal court, the sentence could be no less than 20 years. The complaint says police investigated a series of juvenile medical emergencies in January and then linked the emergencies to a total of three deaths and seven hospitalizations between September and February 1st. Leah Simonton, U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Texas, said in a statement, to deal fentanyl is to knowingly imperil lives. To deal fentanyl to minors, naive middle and high school students, is to shatter futures. These defendants' alleged acts are simply despicable. We can never replace the three teenagers whose lives were lost, nor can we heal the psychological scars of those who survived their overdoses. But we can take action to ensure these defendants are never allowed to hand a pill to a child again. Investigators say they witnessed hand-to-hand -hand drug transactions between the adult suspects and teenage dealers at the Highland Drive home, something neighbors describe as alarming on this otherwise quiet street. It just surprised me that it was coming from the house so close, you know, I didn't even know about it. This afternoon, Carrollton Farmers Branch ISD put out a statement that October 31st, the district sent out an email to all parents alerting them to the dangers of fentanyl. They also held two parent drug awareness presentations and Narcan was obtained in October for all district facilities. The district has also now started doing random canine searches. Steve. Okay, that's Lori Brown in Carrollton tonight. Lori, thank you.